Okay, so before you freak the fuck out with this question here, just know that this is on the step one, okay? I am not sitting here at 6.40 a.m. Wednesday, May 5th, just for entertainment doing this biochemistry question, okay? So this literally is on the step. That's your preface, okay? So it seems obscure, but it's something you need to know. Let's get you a point or two. So that's my preface. We've got this 26-year-old woman. She's uh, consumed nothing but water during a half marathon. So she's in the fasting state. That's our first step. We just say she fed her fasting. She's clearly fasting. So then we look at her two enzymes in blue. We have glycogen phosphorylase and we have acetyl-CoA carboxylase. And we say, are these going to be active in the fasting state or are they inactive? So we say glycogen phosphorylase. This is the enzyme one of the enzymes that breaks down glycogen. Glycogen synthase builds up, glycogen phosphorylase helps break down. So this would be active in the fasting state. So right away, we can eliminate I through P, okay? We've got A through H where glycogen phosphorylase is active. These are the eight answers we'll be looking at so far. I'll come back to the phosphorylation versus dephosphorylation point in a second. Now we look at acetyl-CoA carboxylase and you say, no fucking idea what that enzyme means, okay? Relax. Acetyl-CoA carboxylase, rate-limiting enzyme in fatty acid synthesis. So we have acetyl-CoAs that can be converted to malonyl-CoA. There's a lot we can talk about, but I'm just going to stay concise here. So acetyl-CoA carboxylase, we expect this to be inactive in the fasting state. We don't want fatty acid synthesis. If anything, we'd have fatty acid breakdown, okay? So Right away, our, in, our mini recapitulation, the first part of this question is, we're going to have an active glycogen phosphorylase because this breaks down glycogen in the fasting state, and we'd have an inactive acetyl-CoA carboxylase in the fasting state because we don't want fatty acid synthesis. So we're going to be looking at answers C and D and G and H, okay? Now the dephosphorylation versus phosphorylation point. I'll keep this simple. In the fasting state, we have to ask ourselves, is insulin going to be high or low? Okay? Insulin is an anabolic enzyme. It's increased. Our insulin to glucagon ratio is going to be increased in the fed state. It's going to be decreased in the fasting state. So in this case, we would expect a decreased insulin to glucagon ratio. We would expect, therefore, because insulin dephosphorylates enzymes and insulin is low, we would expect our enzymes to be phosphorylated here, okay? So that's our rule, insulin dephosphorylates. So we say glycogen phosphorylase, it should be active in the fasting state, and insulin's going to be low in the fasting state, therefore our enzymes should be phosphorylated, okay? So we look at answers E through H, and then we go over once again to our acetyl-CoA carboxylase. We say this should be inactive in the fasting state, once again, insulin is low in the fasting state, therefore it should be phosphorylated. Okay, so our answer is H, where we have an active glycogen phosphorylase that is phosphorylated. The enzyme itself is literally phosphorylated. And acetyl-CoA carboxylase is inactive, and the enzyme itself is phosphorylated. Okay, so USMLE is going to do this for a variety of enzymes in the fed versus fasting state. Okay. They could give you someone who eats a turkey dinner, and they could say, what's the status of glycogen synthase? Just as an example, you'd say, well, it's the fed state. Glycogen synthase should be active. And we say, would insulin be high or low in the fed state? We'd say insulin's high. Insulin dephosphorylates. Therefore, glycogen synthase would be active and dephosphorylated. Okay? That's one little mechanism through biochemistry that seems really obscure and low yield. But it's not our opinion as to uh, what should be tested. It's a matter of what actually shows up on the NBMEs and USMLE, okay? So I'm obviously going to make more content. Um, I'm not going to make this a 19-minute clip, okay? So if you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.